Elizabeth Warren, running for Senate in Massachusetts, got some attention with this quote, and I'd just like to read it to you, and you tell me why she's wrong. She says, there's nobody in this country who got rich on their own. Nobody, she says. You built a factory out there, good for you. But I want to be clear, you moved your goods to market on roads the rest of us paid for. You hired workers, workers the rest of us paid to educate. You were safe in your factory because of police forces and fire departments that the rest of us paid for. You don't have to worry that marauding bands would come and seize everything at your factory. Now look, you built the factory, turned it into something terrific. God bless. Keep a hunk of it. But part of the underlying social contract, she says is you take a hunk of that and pay forward for the next kid who comes along. Mm. Why is she wrong? Because she's a socialist. She wants the government to do all this. <laughs> but the whole Educate thing, children is socialism? Well, in a way, when the state runs things, that, uh, that is, is, is a, you know, a socialist idea, that it should be collective. I'm for, I preach homeschooling and private schooling and competition uh, in schools. But what she forgets, she's right. You know, by the use of force, government comes with a gun, they take money from you, and they build a highway that incidentally you can use because you don't have any other choices. But uh, the, the money had to come from productive effort. She's saying it's the government? Who's the government? The government created nothing. The government, only they can do is steal and rob people with a gun and forcibly transfer wealth from one person to another. You take it, the building of our railroads in our early history. They were all subsidized, and most of them went bankrupt, except for one person, Hill, who built the Northwestern uh, Railroad for, uh, out, out to Seattle. He, he didn't get one penny from the government. He was one of the very, very few, if not the only one, of the new railroads that didn't, didn't uh, uh, you know, get any money from the government and didn't go bankrupt. So I would say the opposite is true. Yes, there are successes, and we are forced to use some of the government programs, but it's inefficient. It costs more money, and it was done by transferring wealth, not by creating wealth. Governments are always destructive in the production of wealth. Uh, they pretend that they're going to take care of us, like, well, the government's going to give us all a house. Look at what happened to the house. The, the big guys all got bailed out who ripped us off and with all the derivatives in the banks. They're still being protected. Middle class lost it, and they lost their houses. So her whole argument is absolutely wrong. So in Ron Paul's ideal America, there'd be no public highways, no public education. Uh, there'd be no public air traffic control system. There'd be no public protections for workers in coal mines, etc. Well, et cetera. That, that's an overstatement because it might be a lot better because a lot of those functions can be picked up. I think France has a private uh, air traffic controllers. I mean, it's not like it's strange. The thing with it is, do you want government's inefficiency to do these programs or do you want another source to do it? So that, that, that's a big difference. So uh, I, I think it's uh, how you want to bring it about. And I think private sources, you take roads. Uh, there's no, there's nothing in our Constitution that says Texas can't build roads. But Eisenhower, when he built the interstate uh, uh, highway system, he he knew that he was on the edge of violating the uh, the the Constitution. He says. Well, we'll justify it because it's necessary for national defense purposes. So there was a respect for this at one time. But now everything, government, federal government can do everything at all. But there's no prohibitions against government schools. But there is no authority for the federal government to have a Department of Education and mess up our educational system. All they did was give us debt. Here we are graduating kids that don't know what they're, uh, don't know where they're going to get a job. They owe a trillion dollars. Their education is poorer than ever, and the costs have skyrocketed. It's a total failure. See, we are witnessing now the failure of 50, 60 years of economic planning. The Keynesian model is a complete flop, and that is why we're getting a lot more attention because our approach is completely different, and uh, their failure is staring them in the face, and they have a long way to go to clean up the mess they've created. Congressman Paul, you're a big free market guy, and, and I think a lot of folks respect you for that, but do you not believe that some of these big insurance companies have gotten too powerful in what they can do? Well, yes, this is a consequence of government managed cares. The corporations get involved, the managed health care gets involved, the insurance companies get involved, the drug companies. Who do you think pushed through uh, 
prescription drug programs. It was the it was the drug companies. So I agree, the corporations are out of control. But it's it's not because it's a market function. There's been no market function. There's been a government mandated function of a government controls this. So right now, do you think this administration is going to take on the drug companies and insurance companies? That's not going to happen. We have a type of corporatism that runs in this world and in this country, and it moves toward a fascist system because government and big business go get in bed together, and it's not free markets at all. The, the free market that I know about existed uh, a long time ago, and uh, things weren't nearly as bad as they are today. Let that's, me tell you. That, that's interesting because it's a double whammy that you're proposing. You're saying, look, the corporations are screwed up because they've gotten too greedy, and the people who've helped them get screwed up is the government who have really been their right. allies in this. That, that's a, that's it, absolutely right, and they still are. They still they are, and they will be in, in the outcome of this, outcome, this, this debate. Go ahead, uh, Debbie. Well, you're, 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 suggest, you're suggesting that you don't think the corporations you don't think the corporations work the system. You're going you're to say the government. You don't think they work the system? Excuse me. You're going to you're, you're suggesting that the government tells corporate uh, insurance companies that they they have they have to deny people based on a pre-existing condition that they have to drop the drop people from insurance coverage because they, when they get sick that they that they have to cap damage it that they have to cap. Uh, people's insurance coverage annually and for their entire lives. The government doesn't tell to tell uh, insurance but companies. We, we didn't that, have that. That is corporate greed. That is driven by corporate <laughs> greed and corporate greed alone. And we need to make sure that we strike a balance. That's what this health care re reform bill is all about. It's about striking a balance because the insurance industry in America, when it comes to health care, has run amok, and we have to get a handle on it so we can establish some balance and from some security and stability for the American people. Yes. You know, when, when the dust settles, if uh, the administration gets what they want, they're going to have 30 million more people, you know, get insurance. The insurance companies love this. I mean, it'll be subsidized by the government. The government's going to have to subsidize this, and and the bit and and the corporations aren't going to be complaining. Yeah, they'll complain now, and they might take some rules and all, but they're going to be very happy when all these people have to pay, and the government's behind this. So this this but, but the bad, together. But, 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 but wait a minute. minute. But hold on, More Congressman. We're going to get hold our on. deficits under control. Well, but hold on a minute. <laughs> hold on a minute. The Congressman, the math does not support your argument. Never before in the history of the United States has more money been spent by one industry on one particular legislation to try and influence it. They have spent upwards of $400 million in lobbying fees and ads, etc., to make sure this reform is defeated. If that's the case, why in the world would they, quote, love it, as you say? Well, they, they will, because they'll get something out of it but if you're really wanting to get some competition you know allow the insurance to be sold across uh, state lines do something with tort reform because That's good. That's believe me the number of tests that. yeah yeah really <laughs> we'll see <laughs> the, attorneys the, the, the attorneys aren't going to allow that. And you know, the, the, the attorneys run this place up here. We'll but, leave it at uh, that. It's not likely to happen. We'll, we'll, we'll leave it at that because we're out of time. But I enjoyed the discussion, and I learned from both sides. Thanks. I appreciate it, Congresswoman Thank from you. the Sunshine State. And thanks, uh, Congressman Ron Paul, my thanks to you <laughs> Thank as you. well. Another question from the audience? Yeah, KidDanielsInfoWars.com. Uh, Dr. Paul, if you could debate Bernie Sanders, what would you say to him? And what would you say to the supporters who think that socialism works? What would I say to Jim Bernie? Tim Bernie and, and, and his supporters. His supporters. You know, I, uh, the closest thing I came, I, Bernie and I got along pretty well and we talked a lot, knew exactly where we stood and respected each other's views. And I think Bernie might have voted to audit the Fed, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so he, uh, so give him the benefit of the doubt, but I, the closest I came to a real debate with somebody like Bernie Sanders was with Barney Frank up at the University of Pennsylvania. And, uh, and the, the point that I try to make is, you know, you do well as a principal progressive. And I can do this with uh, Dennis Kucinich, uh, whom I know, I know very well. Uh, and say, well, you know, you want, you don't want to use force in the military. You want to protect civil liberties and you don't like all this war. And sometimes Dennis and I would be the only two voting against some war position. But I said, why, why, and I proposed this to Barney too, is why is it that you won't apply that same principle 
to, you know, that you apply to social engagement, you know, in, in, uh, in social and sexual matters, hands off, as long as it's voluntary and nobody, the government just should be out of it, they should be out of marriage and everything else. And they agree with that. I said, why don't you apply that to economics? And they come up and they say, they understand the consistency. They say, well, um, it's, uh, uh, it's different because mark free freedom in markets allow people to become too rich you know and then they run it and they own everything and they will not listen to the argument that there's a difference between somebody getting bailed out by the federal reserve and they're on the specialist versus somebody who produces a good product and we vote them their money and they haven't cheated or stolen or given us bad products and they make a lot of money why i, I think it's sort of a, an envy and resentment uh, but i talked to them but i have to tell you that uh, so far i haven't converted many uh, diehard progressives because some progressives if you watch it on the internet uh, we'll have really close agreements and they might, you know, be talking about the same issue, but boy, they don't want to even introduce the notion that the libertarians are with them on this because they're terrified that we might encroach on their power to redistribute wealth. So it, it's a tough argument, but that's, that's because they uh, have a stronger belief. Others are sort of in the middle and they can be influenced and they can, they can be converted.